Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. Could Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers be headed to Vegas? Will we be seeing Zion Williamson back on the court anytime soon? And does Air Force satisfy that expansion itch for the Pac-12? This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're Locked On Sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. It is going to be the offseason season of the NFL quarterback and the pivot team in all of this may well be the Las Vegas Raiders. They have a quarterback. Other teams are going to want in Derek Carr. Will it be trade or will it be via a cut and sign? And then they seem like logical destination for Tom Brady, a potential logical destination for Aaron Rodgers. They are of course the Las Vegas Raiders, your boy Q from Locked On Raiders joins me now. And, and Q, we got to deal with this Derek Carr thing first. Sure. They they might want Tom Brady. They might want Aaron Rodgers, but they got to find a home for Derek Carr. What is the most likely outcome of the Carr question? You know, it's a really good question, man, because I, I keep feeling like there's no real chance of him getting traded. And then you hear all the reports of teams interested in a potential trade, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I just just with the money that's that's out there and the fact that so many teams know that he's not going to be the quarterback in 2023 makes me feel like that they'll just wait it out until uh, the Raiders release him, which that February 15th date that they have to have a decision made by is coming up quick, fast, and in a hurry. He'll be here before you know it. So uh, I keep feeling like that they're going to have to release him. But, you know, we're hearing we're hearing about possible Houston uh, as a location, which I think would make a lot of sense. Uh, he has the ties there. Obviously, his brother was the number one overall pick. Uh, yep. when, the, when the organization first took over, uh, when they became an organization. Um, you know, I've, I've thought that for a long time that that was a good spot. He, I know he always wanted to be a Texan back in the day, and that's at least what he says. Uh, I think that the Colts are a location that he can end up. I know Gus Bradley is the defensive coordinator there, but it also it's a good location. I mean, they have a good running game. They have a strong defense. They have a good offensive line. It makes all the sense in the world. They've tried it, though. The problem is they've tried it with veteran quarterbacks, with a Carson Wentz, with a Phillip Rivers, with a Matt Ryan most recently, and it hasn't worked. So do they want to go dip their toes into that uh, water again? I'm not sure. Um, you know, the Jets, I know that they make a lot of sense because they have, they're have they a young team and they obviously don't have a quarterback. Zach Wilson's not the guy. Uh, we know Joe Flacco's not the guy, and, and Mike White is just a guy. So, I mean, it's just there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's different locations that make sense. But ultimately, Peter, he's got the no trade clause. So if there's going to be a trade, he's got to approve it. And, you know, time is just ticking, man. Time, time, time. Tick, tick, tick. It's just going, going, going. So we'll see what happens by February 15th. Yeah, Darius Rucker once sang, time is on my side. And it is not on the side of the uh, the Las Vegas Raiders no. making a trade here. So, I like, Derek Carr's not going to be the quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders in, in 2023. We know that for sure. Yep. That means they're going to have some options. And the ties with Josh McDaniels to Tom Brady, that is going to be an appealing match. Aaron Rodgers might want to throw touchdown passes to Devontae Adams again. He might be on the move. Do you think there's a real possibility of a superstar quarterback coming to the Las Vegas Raiders? I do. I really do. I mean, my gut feeling tells me it's going to be one of those two guys. And Tom Brady makes the most sense because of what you said about Josh McDaniels. And uh, we already know how Tom Brady's built. And I don't think he's going to return to Tampa Bay. We see that they're a team that's in a uh, bad position. But knowing Josh McDaniels like he does, uh, knowing that they have a number one wide receiver, a non- number one running back, assuming that they're going to bring Josh Jacobs back, which I do think that they will. Uh, if they bo- bolster up the offensive line, uh, that can that can do some really good things for Tom Brady. Also, he just signed a, an endorsement deal with the win in Las Vegas uh, for basically his little TB12 body body camp or body coaches or whatever the case may be. But it's something exclusive to to the win in Las Vegas. So those are those ties right there. Now, that could be just a coincidence. I mean, they, you know, they were working on this back in September, but it also could not be a, a coincidence and it could mean something else. And then there's the Aaron Rodgers situation. And you really broke it down for me the other day that a trade is possible. And now you're starting to hear the rumblings of, uh, you know, they wouldn't trade them to an NFC team. They'd have to trade them to an AFC team. And now names of teams are starting to be floated out there. 
personally, I think I like the Rodgers idea a little bit better. I know it'll cost the Raiders some draft capital and maybe even a player, but man, uh, one of those two players I think is going to be the Raiders quarterback in 2023. And the main reason is Las Vegas can't have a loser. Stay up to date all year on the Las Vegas Raiders by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Raiders on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up is Zion close to returning to the court for the Pelicans. Before we answer that, there's only one McDonald's All-American who has not committed to a school or the G League Ignite next year. And you may have heard of him. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. It's FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports easy. New customers join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Pretty good odds, by the way. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. The AFC Championship point spread has swung a ton since it opened. Not a ton in terms of points, but a ton in terms of who we think is actually going to win the Chiefs open as one and a half point favorites. They are now one and a half point dogs at home to the Bengals. Mahomes is a home dog in the AFC Championship. Joe Burrow really has changed things for that Bengals franchise. Don't miss out. Play your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner, the NFL. The 46th annual McDonald's All-American Game roster has been announced and it's headlined by Bronny James. LeBron James' son, a 6'3 guard from Sierra Canyon High School in California, has consistently improved his game throughout his high school career and is now considered one of the better two-way guards in this class. He's being recruited by Oregon, Ohio State, and USC, among others. Bronny headlines a game that includes four recruits from Kentucky's top-ranked class. The McDonald's All-American Games, both boys and girls, will take place in Houston on March 28th at the Toyota Center. The NBA All-Star Game is February 19th, and nobody will know the All-Star rosters until that night. Not even the players themselves. The team captains, probably LeBron James of the LA Lakers, and either Milwaukee's Giannis Antetokounmpo or Brooklyn's Kevin Durant will make their picks in a live televised pregame segment shortly before the game begins in Salt Lake City. Basically like picking teams, picking fives at the Y. The NBA and the National Basketball Players Association announced that change Tuesday night. This will be the sixth time the league has used the format in which captains choose their teams. But in each of the first five instances, the rosters were selected several days before the game. The captains and starters will be announced on Thursday. The Heat trailed by as many as 14 against the Celtics on Tuesday night, but they came away with a win. Down by 14 to a shorthanded Celtics team, the Heat were led by Bam Adebayo for a thrilling comeback victory to put them five games over 500 for the first time all season. I'm David Ramil, the host of Locked on Heat. Miami was without Jimmy Butler, a last-minute scratch due to a back injury from his pregame warm-up. But Boston was without Jalen Brown, Al Horford, Marcus Smart, and Malcolm Brockton. Should be an easy win for Miami, right? Well, only if you haven't been paying attention to this team with more clutch games than any of the NBA decided by five points or less. Jason Tatum on the second night of a back-to-back set was sensational with 31 points to help build that 14-point lead. But it was Bam Adebayo, the all-star that no one seems to be talking about, who dropped 21 of his 30 points in the second half. Adebayo may already be the best defensive player in the NBA, but his growth on offense this season has been quietly spectacular growing from a quiet secondary option that was often criticized for not being aggressive enough to a legitimate and consistent scoring threat. Put simply, Adebayo is evolving into a superstar before our very eyes, and Miami's improved record is certainly proof of that. The Knicks pulled off a big win at home over the Cavs. Redemption for Isaiah Hartenstein and a big-time win for the New York Knicks. I'm Gavin Shaw of the Locked On Knicks podcast, 105-103. to Over the Cleveland Cavaliers, Isaiah Hardenstein blocking the would-be Nick Donovan Mitchell shot inside the final five seconds to seal this one up. 
marked the final minute where R.J. Barrett stripped Mitchell in a one-on-one situation on a fast break for his defensive play of the year. And Hartenstein got another block on Mitchell about 40 seconds earlier. None of it would, would have mattered if Julius Randle hadn't hit eight threes, dropped 36 points, 13 boards, four assists on the Cavs head, was draining from deep, was an absolute beast inside at one point, shaking off three different Cavaliers for a putback. He played some fantastic defense as well. The Knicks needed this one. They got it. They move on to look to build a new streak, this time in the winning direction. And on the ice, the Florida Panthers scored six, but they lost. Oh, no. In OT to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, that was the wildest game of the season for the Pittsburgh Penguins to date. Hey, everyone. I'm Hunter Hodes here with the Locked on Penguins podcast, back with another Locked on Now video as the Penguins win a 7-6 to thriller against the Florida Panthers tonight. We time travel back to the 1980s when the scoring was higher than it is right now. There was no goaltending in this one. And in the end, the Penguins were able to get that much-needed second point in overtime to keep pace with the Eastern Conference with the NHL playoff race. They are now in the first wildcard spot due to a tiebreaker over the Washington Capitals. They will play the Capitals on Thursday. But tonight, it was all about the core. Chris Letang, two goals, two assists, including the game winner. Sidney Crosby, one goal, two assists. Evgeny Malkin, one goal, two assists. Without all that production, there is no chance the Penguins come out with the victory. For more on the Pittsburgh Penguins, you can check out the Lockdown Penguins podcast wherever you get your podcasts. In a battle of Western Conference heavyweights, the Nuggets came away with a 99-98 thriller win over the New Orleans Pelicans, but maybe not a thriller because some names for the Pelicans that are pretty important, guys like Zion Williamson and and Brandon Ingram, not involved in this one. Jake Madison from Locked On NBA and Locked On Pelicans and and all over our NBA feed is here. And, And Jake, this team is really exciting in theory. We haven't seen them in practice much this season. So in a win like this, are you more thinking about, oh God, I I just want to see them? Or are you thinking, hey, they almost beat the best team in the West without their two best players? It's a mix of both, right? You know, the Pelicans are now on a five-game losing streak. They're something like 3-12 and 12 in their past 15 games or so. It doesn't look great. They've fallen out of the third spot in the Western Conference to kind of dangling to maybe go into five. But we don't need to overthink this. The problem is not that their offense is bad or their defense is bad. It's the fact that they don't have Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson. I do yeah. think this Pelicans Ingram team is Morgan. one of the yeah 50 points in street clothes. And they're the engine that makes everything work. I do think this is one of the deeper teams in the league, but that depth works around the stars. It doesn't drive the car. And so when you don't have those guys, everyone has to step up. And you've seen a familiar pattern in these Pelicans games. They fight really hard for a half and then kind of lose the thread of the game in the second half when the role players run out of steam a little bit and star power eventually wins out. I think when you look at this Denver game, look, it's encouraging that they kept it as close as they did and came back from being as many as 19 points down. But at the end of the day, they're at home. It's going to be a little bit easier and they've been playing a bunch of road games. So when you look at this Pelicans team there's two ways to look at it you can be kind of dismayed about the slide that they're on right now which is understandable you want seeding it's important for the playoffs and these games do matter or you can look at it kind of with glass half full approach of they've been really good all season long they were entrenched as the third seed and Brandon Ingram has only played 15 games they've only gotten 10 games out of the combination of CJ McCollum Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram and in those 10 games small sample size of course they were world beaters they looked like one of the best teams in the NBA their net rating would lead the league their offensive rating would lead the league their defensive rating with that starting unit would lead the league when healthy this team's really good so the fact that they've kind of held their own despite a myriad of injuries i think leads you to believe that they could be a potential conference finalist in the west i'm going to do something that is one of the most dangerous things to do right now in the nba and and that is ask for an update on zion williamson and when we expect him to be back because he's only played I think fewer than a thousand minutes this season, which is, which is kind of crazy. They need him if they want to be a Western conference finalist. So where are they with his injury? What's the status there? 
Yeah, you know, it's a hamstring injury and these can be tricky and more or less there's just kind of a set timeline and process that you've got to follow when it comes to these type of injuries. So he got reevaluated this week and they said they're going to reevaluate him in two more weeks. So that puts us at a five week mark before we really see him back out on the court. They said the good news is that it's healing according to schedule. It's going according to plan. This is what's expected of an injury like this. They're focusing on strengthening it right now. Once he works that up a little bit, they'll kind of get him back into game shape, incrementally increase the type of reps and what he does in practice. But realistically, he's probably more like four weeks out from stepping on an NBA court again. You need that two-week reevaluation. And then if that's good, it's going to be a two-week ramp up to play. They need to get some conditioning. He's going to need to go through a couple of five-on-fives. So that's what you're looking at. It's likely going to be post-All-Star break. The good news for them is they're going to get Brandon Ingram back this week, depending on when people are listening to this show. It might be on Wednesday against the Minnesota Timberwolves. They didn't play him against the Denver Nuggets. Take the easier game, which is certainly the Timberwolves instead of the Nuggets. I think that's where you'll see him kind of remake his debut here. Getting one of those two guys back fixes a lot of problems for New Orleans, which has been the offense. And it's someone that can kind of create their own shot, create for others. So I think getting Brandon Ingram back kind of stems the bleeding a little bit for the Pelicans. and probably writes the ship enough because, again, they're a pretty good team. Stay up to date all year on the New Orleans Pelicans by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Pelicans on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Coming up, the Pac-12 needs to expand to keep pace with the top conferences. But is Air Force the answer? Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you have to try Built Bar. I have been resolute so far in my goal since the holidays to get not just back in shape, but get back on a healthy track in terms of lifestyle, in terms of the things that I'm eating, the way that I fuel my body. And Built Bar has been a huge part of it because they don't make you sacrifice taste. And that is crucial. I still want to eat things that taste delicious. So I grab a Built Bar covered in 100% real chocolate with flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. The coconut brownie is my favorite. And I don't know how they do it, but I, I do know that the bars are 130 calories, just four grams of sugar and 17 grams of protein. And now you don't have to wait to get your order from built.com, though you can if you're not in a hurry. You can just go to Walmart or Sam's Club and get a box today. So what are you what are you waiting for? Go go do it. UCLA and USC are headed to the Big Ten, even if that's preposterously weird. But even before they announced their intention to leave, the Pac-12 seemed to be playing second or even third fiddle to the Big Ten and the SEC, maybe even the ACC too. Spencer McLaughlin from Locked On Pac-12 looks at how the Air Force program can increase the prestige of the conference. We are starting and ending today once again with a potential expansion candidate, that being the Falcons of Air Force. They present many intriguing components that I shall not be presenting to you. I'm going to turn it over to my very good friend. Counsel for the plaintiff, Your Honor, Spencer C. McLaughlin, Esquire, graduate of the Locked On Pac-12 University Law School. This is a defense, this is a program, this is a culture, this is a community that cares about football and has made a commitment to playing a physical style that would allow them to compete in the Pac-12. Combined with their brand power as one of just three service academies in the entire country, their strong reputation of taking young men and making them into the sorts of individuals that the Pac-12 is proud of, combined with the viewership potential that Air Force very much has and must be considered, is why we here at the Air Force Academy humbly ask for your consideration for admission into the Pac-12. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin, for making the case for the Falcons. So. Is Air Force an option? Actually, yes. This is one of those moments when you know you've already lost. When you know the prestige of the Pac-12 has already fallen off a cliff. 
when you're trying to talk yourself into Air Force. I mean, what are we doing? No offense to Air Force or any of the service academies. I appreciate all of the service that they provide, both on the field, of course, as a as a athletic product, but but more importantly, in the armed forces. It's not a shot at any of that, but they're not a draw athletically. They don't bring athletic bona fides as a program. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about conference credibility, conference draws. No one is going to go and say, I want to play at Oregon because I get to play Air Force. No, but you might go to Georgia because you know you get to play Alabama. You might go to Michigan because you know you get to play Ohio State. You might go to Clemson because you know you get to, well, okay, no, that's probably not. But (laughs) that's just not going to happen in the Pac-12 and USC leaving, UCLA leaving. That's a big deal. You don't get to go play at the Rose Bowl to play UCLA. You're not going to get to play the iconic USC Trojans. That's a huge loss. And come on, Air Force? No. And finally, the newest member of the Baseball Hall of Fame is Scott Rowland. He played 17 years for the Phillies, Cardinals, Blue Jays, and Reds and won eight gold gloves. Roland narrowly passed the 75% threshold at 76.3%. But think about this. His first year on the ballot, he got just over 10% of the vote. Roland ranks fifth all-time and wins above replacement for third baseman and goes in as the standard in fielding at the hot corner. Plus, I get to say hot corner, which is just one of my favorite things in sports. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast and make them your second listen. Coming up tomorrow, who is the easiest pick to win on championship weekend in the NFL? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.